it has taken me a good five minutes to stop crying. I've just watched the trial of the Chicago 7 and I have to say I'm so glad that this was released on Netflix and not the intended cinema distribution because I was a bit of a wreck at the end of this. This film got off to an exceptionally slow start. I thought this is just going to drag and I don't know if my knowledge is enough to kind of understand what's happening. Um, but now, you know, reaching the end, I, it's one of the most powerful films I've ever seen. So this was released last year in 2020 and directed and written by Aaron Sorkin. And this film took a very long time to come about. I read an interview with Sorkin recently and... Um, yeah, it took a long time for the script to be finished and the final draft to be finalised. And this deals with the seven people who were on trial following the 1968 Democratic National Convention uprising in Chicago. And I knew squat about this before I watched this. Um, I, I hadn't even heard of it. Um, but basically it was a protest activity against the Vietnam War um, just before and during the 68 convention. And people are on trial for various, various different crimes, starting the riot, and uh, one's there for homicide. And this trial lasts for about six months. This is a long film. It's just over two hours, but it's incredible. The pacing is slow to begin with. And I do think there is, there are a few things they could have taken out of this and maybe sped it up a little bit. But what works so well is... Because you are on this journey for such a long time that when it gets to the end, it's so more powerful because you've been through this for two hours and you reach that climax. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's a happy ending, but it's a powerful ending. And I'm British. I can't even imagine what it would feel like to be American and watching this. That is one thing that I found was um, difficult to get on board with. But maybe the first half of the film, the first half of the film, I felt like I didn't know enough about this particular convention. And I feel like the film didn't explain it very well. It did try. There were times where, for example, when we're introduced to a new person who's important in this case, it would pop up on screen with some text saying the name of them and if they were the defendant or you know whose counsel they were. And it, it did it did kind of do its best to explain the the events, but because it's so complicated and so t twisted that I had to kind of head to Wikipedia and read around it. And if you're in the same boat as me, I definitely recommend that. And I did that while watching the film. I apologise if you can hear my laptop making noises. I did that while watching the film, so that's another reason why I found that having it on Netflix was a, just really helpful because if I was watching it in the cinema there may have been certain things that I didn't really grasp and I do think it's a film that will take multiple watching. Will I watch it again? No. Um, no. It's it's wrecked me. I'm an emotional wreck. Um, I may watch that ending again because it it's, it's hard. It's very hard to watch. Um, but it's one of the most powerful scenes I've ever seen in cinema and it just made the whole two hour well I'd say an hour an hour slog the first hour was very slow and then it really picks up pace but that's only because it gets more shocking and I've never wanted to punch a character as much as I did with this one and Judge Hoffman I just oh another reason why I'm glad it's not in the cinema is because I probably would have walked out of the screening and punched a wall. I'm not a violent person, but I do get really angry at people who are jobs worth and ignorant and stupid. And he was biased. He was prejudiced. I would say he was racist. I absolutely hated that character. Um, well, he's a real person, of course, um, but brilliantly played by Frank Lagella. The rest of the cast is fabulous. Eddie Redmayne is Tom Hayden. Alex Sharp as Rennie Davis, Sasha Baron Cohen as Abby Hoffman, and I'm going to read Abby Hoffman's book if I can get hold of a copy. This is the first serious role I've seen Sasha Baron Cohen in, and I think he did a fanta really phenomenal job. Everybody just so powerfully acted. John Carroll Lynch as David Dellinger. Um, I'm probably going to really badly pronounce the actor who played Bobby Seale's name. It's Yaya Abdul-Mateen II. I hope I pronounced that correctly. 
um, a whole bunch of other, uh, Michael Keaton was in it briefly, it's just, it's absolutely sensational and I can't quite get over how incredible this film is and how much it's affected me emotionally. It's had seven wins and 30 additional nominations. I don't, I actually don't know what's happening with the Oscars this year. So, um, but it's definitely, if the Oscars are on, I don't know if they're postponing them because of the current pandemic. Um, no, the Oscars are on in April this year. So I feel like it's going to do very, very well. Absolutely fantastically. I think it's a strong Oscar contender, assuming they're allowing Netflix films now to be considered as for the Best Picture Award, which I hope they do. It's just... Uh, for somebody who knew nothing about this event, for somebody who was usually in favour of the court and the police, I have been affected by this in ways that I didn't think I would. I'm definitely going to read more around this. It's absolutely incredible. It's in insanely well acted. Once you get past the first hour, the pacing's fantastic. And I know it seems weird to say you have to sit through an hour of a film before it gets very good but it's become so good and that ending is so insanely powerful that you have to watch it it's on netflix you can watch it in the comfort of your own home which i strongly suggest you do because it's uh oh it's painful it's it's painful for all the right reasons please watch it please let me know what you think the trial of the chicago seven is just breathtakingly beautiful